Okay, so <clears throat> talking a little bit about pain uh, for a while, and um, so uh, with with pain, um, one of the things to know with, there's, there's different things. I mean, one of the things generally uh, we were talking a bit earlier in the group about uh, how things that come up in life which are difficult are opportunities mm -hmm. and in when uh, practicing the Course in Miracles there is the um, generally speaking when doing the Course in Miracles you'll find uh, cancelling of beliefs like I cancel my belief in pain in uh, pain in the left side of my body I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind I'm just going to the observer of the pain uh, just by doing that, generally speaking, my, my experience with doing those things, actually, yes, all my illnesses actually left. All my, without actually, you know, it was like just in doing the Course of Miracles, doing the Observer, sitting with the feelings, all the illnesses just left over time, mm -hmm. miraculously. So <clears throat> that will just get rid of most things. But I remember one of my teachers, Dr. Hawkins, saying that on occasion, you may do a lot of spiritual work mm -hmm. with an illness and it still may not go away. Mm -hmm. And often uh, with that, you have to find the specific message that an illness has before it will, it will permanently go away mm -hmm. or completely go away. So it hasn't been my, my experience with gen general work, all of them left. So my kidney failure, uh, my gout the pains in my feet left, mm -hmm. uh, the asthma left, just by doing general spiritual work. All of these, uh, by joining a 12-step fellowship, um, you know, my addiction, uh, food addiction has gone now for over nine years. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, doing spiritual work, these things, on, on occasion, I mean, if, if there is a specific message, you can just uh, do a prayer, pray, pray to God for enlightenment mm -hmm. as to the meaning yeah. of, of an illness. Um, now, pain, now so here's the thing with pain, uh, one that I, that I really like to do with pain is just to sit with it and feel it. Mm. Re remember pain is a label, so you, do, you don't call it pain, because you know, just by labeling, having the label and agreeing to the label of pain in your mind is already imposing a kind of form, yeah. is kind of a program as to, so it's setting in combination what's called a belief system. Mm -hmm. As soon as you say a, a certain label or word, it's kind of like pulling up from the collective an, express, an expression of form through mm -hmm. belief systems. So you don't want to like do that because then it will just pull out of the collective consciousness of humanity mm -hmm. how that should manifest for how long and what symptoms. You don't want to really be engaging in that. So uh, just let go of the label and just experience it. Remember, it's not pain, it's more like an energy. It's not really an energy, it's just a sensation. It's not really a sensation, you don't even have to give it any labels or forms or words. With word, just wordlessly experience it without trying to impose anything from the head onto the experience of it. And then it'll start to dissipate, it'll get, it'll get more and more diffuse, and every time you do that, there's a good opportunity that over time uh, the, the pain will disappear and, and not come back if you keep doing that. That has been my experience. With gout, I'd have these horrific gout attacks in my feet. I'd sit with them and feel them until they disappeared. Then they'd happen again after a few days and I'd do that again. But after a few years of just continuously sitting with it and feeling it until it's gone, mm -hmm. they happened less and less frequently, the attacks. And then they totally stopped, and the medication was stopped, and I've never had an attack since for many years. So just by ex experiencing the energy out of it, you know, that's one way to do it. The other tool to use with it is the observer. Yes. So, you know, what you resist, what is in resistance is experienced. When there's no resistance, there's no experience. It does not exist when there's no... Uh, it's only the resistance. So what creates resistance? Well, the ego, being in your head and, uh, or being identified with the thoughts within your head and with the body, are, is, creates, creates resistance. 
And that resistance creates experience. And that experience is the experience of separation. So, um, you see, so by having an ego or an ego body identification, you experience individuality mm. or, or separation, feeling like you're a separate person, if you like, in a, in a world apart from a separate person. So as you start to dissolve the ego, you start to get the experiences of oneness or limitlessness or, or that there is no separation or feeling of disconnected from others or the universe at all. So, so what, again, let's tie it down to pain. Mm -hmm. So pain is, uh, if you like, some kind of ego resistance, you know, some kind of belief systems or thoughts or repressed emotions which are now manifesting as pain. Now this can be, we know from uh, um, different vibratory consciousness levels that the more one is uh, identified with the ego, i.e. could be one is more in addiction, one is more in negative thinking, one is more in you know, anger, or whatever it is, uh, the bottom, bottom vibrations are usually full of guilt and shame. And these high intensity, low vibration states attract illnesses which correlate to the vibration. Generally, the lower your vibration is because of uh, suppression, repression, addictions, negative thinking, or uh, uh, negative attitudes to, to oneself and the universe, then it's like that, you know, in terms of the Course in Miracles, that guilt will pick up an analogous illness emotional or physical illness or relationship to correlate with that level of negativity. Mm. So usually, you know, um, I might, I don't, mm. not meaning to be, uh, you know, like there was an illness, um, uh, I'm sure everyone knows about it, like lots of people who felt very, very guilty and shameful about themselves, they, and an illness manifested which killed them, mm. you know, some years back and was lethal at the time. So it's like when you have too much guilt and shame about your experiencing of self, or you have guilt and shame about some actions you've done in the past, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. or that you're not living your life because you're an addiction, or whatever it is, then you'll pick up a corresponding illness or addiction or a, a mental problem to correlate with that level of disconnection mm -hmm. from the universal truth. So, again, pain... Um, when I went to see one of my, uh, you know, my spiritual teacher, Dr. Hawkins, I went to America to see him. Mm -hmm. And he had done the Course in Miracles and other spiritual work and recovered from 23 illnesses. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. 20, I only had three illnesses, he had 23. So I, I uh, and, um, and I asked him, you know, what shall I do to release my illnesses? Mm -hmm. uh, he, will, he will also was, uh, he also had al alcoholism and he went to a 12-step program to release that which I went to a 12-step program with my food addiction and went to other 12-step programs from other addictions. But, um, uh, and he said, you know, there was a hidden message in gout. And he found out the hidden message and he said, um, he told me to pray for forgiveness for the one in me uh, who caused pain to others in this lifetime and others, you see, past lives. So, so it was like, because I was an addict, and I was creating a lot of pain to my family, and, and just, uh, it was just, uh, you could say, uh, just uh, my, my whole experience of being so self-centered was just to create pain to all my loved ones, mm. was that I developed a, a pain, you know, the, the guilt that I had, the shame that I had manifested. I picked up from the collective, my ego is waiting for an illness, that would be, I could manifest to like, uh, manifest that pain in physical form. In my thing, it was a physical form, I had gout attacks. Another person might choose a, a painful relationship. Mm -hmm. Another person might, you know, you know, I mean, illnesses like cancer or life-threatening, well, you know, when you get a, an illness for me, which is going to like, you've got a three-month diagnosis to live. Mm -hmm. For me, you know, everything correlates to the level, you know, mm -hmm. but also there's, there's a lot of um, grace, mm -hmm. you know, like I was taken to the kidney failure, the, you know, the gates of death, really, mm -hmm. with my illness. So it was like, 
that's a great opportunity tool for people who are in addiction or people who get high blood pressure or people who get cancer. All of these things force one to find a spiritual solution. Otherwise you wouldn't. You just wouldn't be bothered. You know, mm -hmm. like why, sh why should I abandon what I'm doing in my life to do spiritual work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you're facing death or something like that, or you have a wake-up call or you've just faced death, then mm. those, those are actually like massive opportunities, if you take them, mm -hmm. to really embrace change and, and getting well and letting go of the behaviors, the attitudes, or, or the repressed, uh, uh, repressed feelings or the identified beliefs, really purging those mm. so that one can experience the truth of who one is and who one is supposed to be. Mm. So, so again, so just coming back to pain, so apart from feeling feelings, I was just trying to give this thing of resistance. Yes. So um, if you go to the ob observer, you see you'll have the, this pain, which is a bit like an object. Pain is like if I hold a pen in front of you, it's like if you're, well, a pen is what I call a neutral object. So everyone sees that as it is they can see that there is a distance between the pen and them. They don't think the pen is them. Mm -mm. But, you know, when most people experience pain, they feel the pain is intimate. Mm -hmm. Like the pain, I am the pain, or the pain is in me, or some, something like, the, you know, it doesn't seem like it's detached and far away and not important. Yeah. So this means there is high identification. There is high interest, the, you know, in that. Mm. Now, um, here's the interesting thing if you want to go into consciousness work, um, is that uh, everything, now the Course says this thing, and it's true, even though a lot of people find it difficult, that everything in this world is a magical belief. It, none of this thing that we believe as a collective, you know, science and all of this stuff, these are all magical beliefs. These are all things that consciousness can do automatically, you know. And here's the thing with morphine, like everyone knows that with morphine, like you get, it's like the pain becomes detached at a distance, it has no effect on you. Well, actually, consciousness can do that, and morphine is just a belief system. Consciousness does that automatically. If you detach the meaning and interest, you go to the observer of the pain, then you'll start to get detachment from it. And if you go to the... <clears throat> the the detached observer of the pain, it will disappear. When there's no interest or value given to it, then it just vanishes. And, uh, you know, I've had some experiences where... Um, um, oh, yes. Well, the one that I had... I, I'll, I'll share two of them. When I had my... Um, I, I was determined after I had my kidney transplant that I would refuse... After I came out of the general anaesthetic, I'd refuse all painkillers. I'd say no to the morphine and all the painkillers and just experience the pain uh, after the operation. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, it, it did feel like there was a, like a huge kitchen knife in my gut, really. Mm. It was, you know, as I refused to all. It was extremely intense, but I was just like feeling it. And then I remembered that I wouldn't get any sleep because it was that intense just to be with the pain. And then I remembered, you know, I had taken a, a little MP3 player with Muji on it. And uh, so I put these headphones on, and he was like going into the, telling me to go to the observer. So I was listening to it, and I went, so I thought, of course, yes, go to the observer of it. And I fell asleep, and it just vanished. As a, it's, it's like, what's observing? So even though I had like surgery pain, it's, it's a massive cut. Yeah. You know, when they cut you open to put a new kidney in you, they, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a quite, a, quite a large cut. Yeah. So it was very intense. But as I went to the observer, of the pain, then it just straight off into the deepest sleep I ever had. And you have to go into the deepest sleep because, you know, you, a light sleep, you would just wake yeah. you up again. Mm -hmm. So that's the power of the observer. The other one of feeling the feelings, which was, that, that's the miracle of just being the observer. So it, the observer, the completely detached observer, mm -hmm. there is no pain there. Pain does not exist in that place. Now, the, another one I had was that... Um, this was, near, this was when I was very new to spiritual work, but I was familiar with Hawkins' uh, strategy of feeling the feelings. And um, so I had, uh, this I means quite funny, because this is just soon after my uh, food addiction, 
I was getting, I was coming to master my food addiction. And um, they told me not to eat bananas because I, you know, I would have, because uh, your kidneys can't regulate potassium any longer. So if you, if you, eat, if you eat high potassium foods, you'll have a heart attack and die. Of course, I went out and had a large quantity of bananas. Because <laughs> I was a food. This is the thing. This was the thing. I, I was a food. You, unless you're an addict, you, you don't understand addiction. So even if a doctor says to you, don't do this because you'll die. Yeah. If you're an addict, you can't stop yourself from doing it. You know, that was the power of addiction. I hadn't really properly entered mm. spiritual well, work. bananas and not donuts? Well, you know, the, 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 the thing, no, you have to understand that the thing with addiction and, and when you get to the low levels is you're trying to commit, you're trying to kill yourself. Oh, yes. You're, you're, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're yeah. literally mm. trying to kill yourself yes. mm. with your addictions. Yeah. So you drink yourself to death, you drug yeah. yourself to death, and you will eat yourself to death unconsciously, mm -hmm. not consciously, mm -hmm. okay. it's not a conscious choice, you know. <clears throat> so, you know, like the uh, heroin, I didn't take drugs, but the heroin addict who's getting closer and closer to an overdose and death, mm -hmm. will keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And why do they do it? Well, unconsciously, not consciously, they want to die. You know, mm -hmm. they don't want to live. You know, and mm -hmm. uh, when addiction, you have to understand that when you get to the lower levels of... Con but, you know, even with normal people, they do this mm -hmm. to a very mild extent. They do unhealthy behaviours over and over again. Yeah. Addiction is just a very extreme thing. Mm -hmm. Like everyone... Go, you know, like half of the population is on a diet, but then they'll eat chocolate biscuits all the time and mm -hmm. they'll break their diet. So even normal people do this. They can't stop themselves from mm -hmm. doing it. But addiction is like a severe case mm -hmm. where you're really trying to kill yourself really quickly. So it was unconscious. I had the bananas, mm -hmm. but I, I was aware of the spiritual techniques. I was starting to adopt the spiritual techniques. I had my, <clears throat> my first major spiritual experience uh, near death. So, um, so he, and they had this really long needle. Now, you know, like blood needles are about that big. I know them, they're not this small. But this was like a long needle, which mm -hmm. they, to, 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 to inject into your arm to give you the emergency uh, treatment. Yeah. I guess they wanted it into the blood supply, you know, really deeply, quickly, so as to, yes. to quickly mm -hmm. save you from death. And that was a long needle. I wasn't looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I used the field of feelings which was that I would 100% experience it without resistance. You know, I wanted to experience it 100%. And as they were plunging it in, you know, I was, I was just being like really trying to experience it without resistance. And I went off. I, I started to lose consciousness. I was going off into bliss, you know. So hence the thing, I mean, they, you know, the real, and what then happened, because I was losing consciousness as they were plunging it in. Mm -hmm. I was got, like going off into heaven. I was just mm -hmm. going to like collapse. And so they woke me up. And they were giving me like, I wasn't diabetic, but they were giving me sugary drinks. They thought yes. I was di a diabetic. So I have this sweet drink. And I was a food addict, so I loved the sweet drinks. So I, took, <laughs> I, took, I took the sweet drinks and that woke me up. But it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a demonstration to me that if you really experience the feelings 100% and feel them, you'll, you can actually catapult yourself off into heaven. And, and, and catapult off yourself into another dimension. So those were two of my own experiences of the observer mm -hmm. and also feeling the feelings can actually catapult you off into really high spiritual dimensions. And that is actually the grace of right, really having to do those. Sometimes like you're, and Hawkins once mentioned this, sometimes you're forced, your life, it's like almost your life depends on you executing the stuff, mm -hmm. your spiritual techniques perfectly. And sometimes you do do them perfectly when you really need them. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, that's a great mm -hmm. thing. Also, there's another person, like some people here know, and uh, who experiences cramps. And I used to experience cramps. And if you catch a cramp uh, just before it starts and feel it 100%, you don't get it. Mm -hmm. And if you resist it, then you experience it. Mm -hmm. And I had someone in this group who had exactly, I shared it, and he had the same experience. Like, if you just feel it straight away, mm -hmm. without resistance, you don't get anything. Mm. So these techniques are very, very powerful. So if you keep doing these, along with your other spiritual work, quite often you can, like, eliminate, eliminate uh, uh, pain. Yeah. You know, so those are some of the experiences with pain. Mm -hmm.